Hello friends, Jeff here with House of Heresy and back again with another pack cracking episode. Today we're going to go back once again into probably one of the more infamous sets of the last couple years that are, is highly polarizing and that is Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. So most people just refer to it as Baldur's Gate because they don't like to associate the Commander Legends name with it. Um, you know, for better or for worse, the set itself has actually, I think, turned out to be a pretty decent set. Um, I think one of the big issues with it was that the price point was quite outrageous when it first came out, and the uh, the cards in it were not quite what people were expecting, because when you had the first Commander Legends, we had some pretty solid reprints in there. I think people were kind of thinking, uh, thinking that we were going to get more of the same, and then on top of that, you had... Double Masters 2022, which was almost immediately announced and spoiled as uh, as this was launched. So it really kind of cut the legs out from under what would have otherwise probably been a more or less acceptable product um, if it wasn't priced so high. Um, good news for us, though, you know, um, almost a year later is that the prices are have they became very reasonable. I mean, a lot of people got burned on the retail side of it, the sellers and things like that, people who had pre-ordered for pretty uh, high prices in the beginning, but uh, looking past that for the rest of us that you know didn't do that, like the, the set itself actually has a lot of really good cards in it, and there's some good value to be found in here, potentially. All right, so we'll get right into it. Unfortunately, there's also a lot of cards in here that do not have good value, and there's a lot of, uh, there's a preponderance of legendary creatures that usually do not bode well, especially when they're multicolored. So this um, this is actually pretty a pretty good one here, the Decanter of Endless Water. That one sees some play. And you get into some of the some of the uncommons, you get the backgrounds, the foil etch there, and then we get to our first rare. John Aranicus, Shattered One. He's okay. I don't think he has any real value, so we'll keep, put him down there. We get Endless Evil, Archivist of Agma. That is awesome. Uh, not gonna lie, this is kind of the, one of the reasons why I wanted to open this product right now, is I really needed this card for a deck, so that's a hundred percent going on top. It's a very good card, good value, sees a lot of play. We got the Zevlor, uh, the Eltural Exile, Bane, Lord of Darkness, and finishing it up with Traverse the Outlands. Okay, I don't think this one's a super high value one, but it's actually not a terrible card. Um, I know, probably not CD, CEDH level, but I know some people that, that play, play it, so I'll put it up top because I think it's pretty good, especially for a foil extended art. And then we got a Boo token, which is always cool. Boo with treasure. All right, so right off the bat we got the one card that I was actually really the most interested in pulling. So this, I should have said it before we started, but that, uh, that marks this box a success in my book. So quite happy about that. Everything else will just be cake from here on out. But hopefully we get some good stuff because uh, this this product can perform if um, if the uh, the the uh, box gods are smiling on you. We got Windshaper, Plain Tar, Venture Forth, Will's Reversal, a card that I actually kind of like in some of my red decks. Raised by Giants as a foil etch background. Miram Sentinel Worm. I know she hasn't really got a ton of, I don't think she's really gone up in value very much, or he, the dragon. But this is actually what, probably one of the most playable um, legendary creatures in the the uh, in the set here. A lot of people use that. Ooh, we got our first mythic. Blood Money, Extended Art Foil. Um, I haven't seen anybody actually playing with this. Seven mana is a really steep cost, even if you're able to generate um, bunch of tap treasure tokens but we'll put it in the mythic pile up there all right not really the mythic we were looking for I, I could be wrong but I, I don't think that holds much value because that's a very expensive card to, to cast initially to get the payoff and then all the treasure comes in tapped so you're still waiting to actually use it unless you got something with affinity or or what have you all uh, right, going through the, some of the uncommons here. Guild Artisan. First rare is Cultist of the Absolute. Another background. Psionic Ritual. 
another Traverse Seattle ends up at the top. Bob Olegasa, Night Witch in the Etched Foil. Nine Fingers Keen. And finish with the Alandu the Seer. I'm not a huge fan of the showcase in this end, and I, I think that's probably the more common sentiment than not for, mo for a lot of people. I don't know too many people that really love the uh, that uh, that style. Um, and that pack kind of showcased some, one of the issues with this set is that there's just a lot more opportunities to get commanders, essentially. <laughs> Which, uh, that's not really where the value is in the set. So you, you kind of want to dodge all those legendary creatures, especially in that back slot there, the um, the foil slot in the uh, in the end. We got Lulu, loyal Hollyfont. Hey, there we go. Land cycle. We will make room for that. All about the uh, the crowd lands there, the old battle bond lands. Hopefully, we get more. Hey, deep known Terramancer is another good one. I don't think it's quite got the value that it did. I could be wrong about that, but I, f I think this one ticked down a little bit. But still, pretty good card. We'll put that up there. Robe of the Arch Magi. We got the Bestower or Jellyfish. Uh, Zevlor. And finishing with Gale's Redirection. That's another another one of the kind of issues with the set, too, is that it, it's just like AFR. It um, kind of leans into the whole dice rolling, d20 rolling stuff, you know, capitalizing on that connection with Dungeons and Dragons, and that hasn't really resonated with the actual Magic the Gathering players overall. I know that, like, I don't mind them that much, but I know that there are quite a few people that are not a fan. So, with that said, with it, there really is a pretty strong rare cycle, and, and there are some good mythics in here too. So overall, I, I still think it's a good set, but. All right, we got Altar of Ball. I oh, got another mythic here. The um, Furkrag, the Cunning Instigator. I think this is one of the commanders. They don't have separate um, symbols for <laughs> for the commander decks because it's a commander set. So it's sometimes it, if you don't actually know it, it can be a little hard to tell. Intellect Devourer, another Nine Fingers Keen. Volo, um, Iterant Scholar. So another mythic. Not really. Again, not really the mythic we're looking for there. And then Illithid Harvester with a Sapperling and a Treasure. All right, last pack of the first row. We're doing okay. We're not killing it by any stretch. Um, when I bought these, th this is one of the ones that I pulled out of my personal collection. Um, when I bought these, they, they were definitely at their low point. They've started to trend back up. So it's not, it's a lot easier to re reach that price point currently. <laughs> But if I was going to go, if I just bought this one, it would be, we'd be probably struggling a bit right now. Not saying we're doing great, but we're we're not doing terrible either. Quite happy to get that archivist, Cerevox Tome. Another elephant harvester getting the duplication in this box. Uh, Invoker Adept. Ooh, we got a mythic Bramble Sovereign. One of the uh, the reprints there. This one's actually pretty solid. Um, and that's in the borderless treatment, one of my favorite types of treatments. So we'll throw that up there, and then we end with a Merkle, Lord of Bones, and a goat. Okay, all right, so we got four mythics, we got one of the lands, and then we got at least two really good rares. I'm, I'm I still, like I said, I personally like the Traverse Dale lands. I know I don't, I, I honestly don't recall if that's like a, a high dollar one or not, but we'll, uh, just so we don't have a completely bare one or area up top there, I'm gonna say that it's good, <laughs> good enough to put up there. All right, got our uncommons there, and we got a Babel Gasa. Yeah, ideally the first and the last slot you 100% want to try to dodge these legendary creatures because for the most part that is not where it's at for you. Uh, the Twin Collie Hunter, another Gale's redirection, and we're really getting. Hit hard with the uh, the duplication hammer on this one. Another ball, Alondo again, and another intellect there. Sheesh, that was like a pack full of duplication there from what we already got. Not the pack we want to open. That, just, that never feels good. Um, obviously, the real money makers are going to be those. Uh, um, going to be the um, the ancient dragon cycle. 
that's really where you're going to get the most of your value. If you can pull an ancient copper, you're probably the box overall is going to do okay. Um, and then followed by uh, some really strong rares, and then the land cycle, which we are rocking in the um, in the pack foil slot there. So that's our second one, Spire Garden. I'll take that. Hey, there we go. There's another really nice hit. Black Market Connections. This one is out of the Commander decks. I think the Party Time deck. Um, but this is a really strong hit. Quite good. So we will happily take that. Put that up there. I am also a fan of the Basilisk Collar. I know that with the reprint it's gone down in price, but I'm going to put that up there as well because I think that's a good card. Another Merkel. And hey, there we go. Double tap in the Basilisk Collars. I'm okay with that. That duplication I can live with. Now if we could duplicate some of those other cards up there. I know we got two of the Traverse to Outlands, but if we could get another Archivist, another Black Market Connections, more, a couple more of the lands, we'll, we might be able to pull off at least a passable box. So right now it's looking a little on the shakier side. We should be doing for a few more Mythics as well. All right, we got Shadowheart, Dark Justicar, the Nalfshni, <laughs> Which actually I use in my um, my mono red Urbrask commander deck that I've been testing out, and it's very good in there. Call to the Void, Rafael, Fiendish Savior, Lazeal. I use this in my Asika deck, my um, Planeswalker Super Friends deck there, which is quite good. Oh, we got a Mythic, Tasha the Witch Queen. Not the uh, borderless foil. Um, Planeswalker that we were hoping for. The Minsk and Blue Boo is where it at is where it's at. But actually, I'm not sure if I've pulled the many Tasha's there, so that's pretty cool. I want to like her, but having played the version that they put into Arena, I do think that one is better than the paper copy. So it's hard for me to really get behind Tasha. And Demir is even though I, I choose not to build a lot of decks in the colors, that is by far my favorite color combo so I, uh, I'm kind of a little bit more selective about the Demir decks that I commit to building. Mirror of Life Trapping, kind of an interesting card, hey, another mythic. Passionate Archaeologist. Um, actually I kind of needed a copy of this so that's good. This this is another one that will be great in uh, in the Urbrask. Hey there we go, there's our third land. So that's nice to see, we'll always be happy with that. Got Will, Shadowheart, and Elazil. All right, two packs left. Um, this has not been a stunning box. I think we are slowly and steadily creeping our way into a, if not a fully solid box, it's also not a complete disaster box. Like the rares have really been hooking us up. I can't really say the same for the Mythics. I don't think we've really hit it out of the park. I think Bramble Sovereign's okay. I'm not really sure where a passionate archaeologist sits at. I don't think Tasha is super expensive, but um, but with, between the lands and the rares, I think we're doing okay. Eldric Pact, which actually I think is a not a terrible card. Oops. Bothersome Quasit. This is a fun one for the Goat decks. Another mythic. Storm King's Thunder. Um, this is one I believe I put into my um, Urbrask deck, which is mono red, uh, kind of a spell slinger, cast from exile type deck. So I, I don't think it's super valuable. I got Shadowheart, Dark Justicar. Oh, there we go. Okay, this box just went into the really good category. That is a Borderless Ancient Copper Dragon. Definitely probably the biggest hit outside of it being actually in foil of the box. So we will 100% take that. That just saved the box right there for from. I, I think if the box was okay before that, but this just like crushes it or makes it to where it is is it is a hundred percent a solid box. We'll see what we get for the rest of it, but that is the the hit of the box there at least so far. And then caves of chaos adventurer. All right, well, this uh, turned into be exactly the box I was hoping it would be. Got an archivist right off the bat. Pull the sweet ancient copper, the best, most expensive of the. Um, of the ancient dragons in this set, and we got some other good stuff. So hopefully we get a couple more good, good uh, cards in this pack. But overall, I, I can't complain. This has been a pretty good Baldur's Gate, and then we got some of the lands too, which always happy to see. Another Miriam, never terrible. Brain Stealer Dragon. I have not seen this 
in play at all. It's also quite expensive. The flutist. Got Alanda the Seer. Jan Jansen, Chaos Crafter. And last card of the box is Altar of Ball. Okay. Not the most exciting final pack. Oops. I accidentally hit that corner when I pulled it open the pack. But okay. Um, you know what? For what it is, I think this is actually pretty good. Sorry, I'll probably reorganize a little bit here. I think this is actually a pretty good, um, pretty good Baldur's Gate collector box. We did end up with quite a few mythics. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Myth actually, I guess it's not that many. It looks looked like more when it was laying out there. Um, I know these three for me are probably the top three. Um, definitely these two, I, and I needed this card. I think. Getting borderless foil Tasha is pretty cool, but I don't think that's like a super high value hit. I could be wrong. And I don't think many of the others are really crushing it there. And then we're getting three of the lands. Always happy with that. I love love lands. I try to collect all the ones that I can get. And the crowd lands are just generally good. And then we did pretty well. I know, I know these aren't a huge dollar value, but I like them. I think they're good. This is a great hit. I'm pretty sure Deep Gnome Tamarants are still pretty solid. And then the Archivist is also quite good. Um, and then Traverse the Outlands, I like. I'm not 100% sure if that's crept up in value at all or not. But yeah. All right. So hope everyone enjoyed that. I, it's kind of fun to go back and do this. I know the, the Baldur's Gate just by in and of itself is not going to get many views. People just aren't, still are not into the set, even though you get some pretty good boxes like this and some cool cards in there, but I get it. Um, be really curious to see what, if anything, they pull out of this set to put into Commander Masters. Because um, obviously if they reprint stuff like the uh, like the Dragon, the Elder Dragon Cycles, that could be kind of bad. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they reprinted all the Crowdlands, even though that, again, would, would feel kind of bad because they, they do hold some degree of value but we'll see we'll see what they do um so hopefully everyone enjoyed it if you liked what you saw please give us a like um if you'd like to see more please subscribe new content coming out every week and throw some comments down there um is anybody now that we're getting close to that year mark from release of this product are we starting to uh, accept that it's not as bad as as uh, our emotional responses were were telling us or is it still pretty much just dead to to, to all of you so Throw some comments down there. Let us know what your thoughts are. Thanks again, and until next time.